in this video, let's have a look at the concept of the distributed leg model by looking at an example and we'll give some intuitive, intuitive explanation why this makes sense. So suppose we have still our regression where we, where we predict sales of our jeans. Recall that we have this example with the fashion industry, so we're selling jeans and we're regressing it based on the change in prices at the current period plus the change in prices in the previous period and the change in prices two periods ago. So we have two legs of the independent variable. Because recall from the previous video, we had the model where we had the autoregressive model, so we regressed sales on its own legs. Now we're regressing sales on the legs of the independent variable, which is price in this case. Now, one more thing about the time series models. Although it's written like that, t, t minus one, t minus two, it, it kind of looks like we're looking in the past what was the effect from the past on the current period of sales and that's true we use the past data to see the slope coefficients because the slope coefficients are based on actual results from the sample they are based on results where we fit a line that predicts as accurately as possible sales on previous values of prices but the reason we're having this data is to predict in the future so I said it a couple of videos ago, with time series, we used past data to forecast in the future. That's the whole point why the time series exists, because data changes across time and the time flows into the future. Hope this makes sense. So suppose we're having these numbers over here, sales in 2019, so that's going to be two years later, based on the change in prices in, this, in 2019, which is going to happen then, the prices one year previously, 2018, and prices in 2017, which happens right now. So we're here, right? We're 2017, but we are projecting two years ahead until 2019. Why are we able to project that? Because we took data from the past. Let's say we took data that happened until 2015 based on change in, in prices in 2014 and also changes in prices in 2013. So based on that, we are able to derive some slope coefficients that are used to forecast in the future. Now, watch, watch this. So let me zoom out. Let's give some uh, practical numbers. And let's assume, by the way, that these slope coefficients are significant. How would we interpret them? So for the sake of the example, for the sake of the example, let me give some numbers here. Now, what is the effect of changes in prices? When price increases, what happens to sales? A logical thing is that sales would decrease, right? Price goes up, demand goes down. That kind of makes sense. So let's give some negative slope coefficients. And they would be, for instance, minus 0 0.8. Over here, it would be, for instance, minus 0 0.6. And here, minus 0 0.4. We're going to argue why it goes uh, in this order and not the other way around. So. How do we interpret it? For instance, what does minus 0 0.8 mean? Remember, this is a partial effect. So keeping, keeping the changes in prices in 2017 and 2018 constant, or in other words, the price level in 2017 and 2018 are kept constant, they do not change. Only when price increases in 2019 by $1, let me write like that, let me write it like that. So over here, over here, we're saying that price in 2018 17 so i'm gonna put it 17 like that stays constant price in 2018 stays constant but the price in 2019 increases by one dollar the price of our jeans in 2019 goes up by one dollar when that goes up by one dollar the sales for that quarter let's say it's measured in quarters it's gonna decrease by min minus 0 0.8 times a thousand dollars because this is measured in thousands of dollars so that's gonna be 800 dollars less in sales because the jeans are more expensive that's the idea now, how would we interpret minus 0 0.6? Let's give a, the same analogy, the same logic. Well, over here, we're keeping the other two constant. The, there's no change in 2017. So price of 2017 of our gene stays constant. In 2019, there's no change either. Price in 2019 doesn't change, but price in, let me change colors, but price in 2018 over here, price in 2018, 18 would go up by $1. Well, that effect is gonna decrease our sales by minus 0 0.6 times $1,000. So, a decrease in sale of $600. Why is the effect on sales lower than in 2019? And why would there be an effect from the change in price in 2018 on the um, sales in 2019? Let's give an intuitive example for that. Well, suppose how the mechanism work, works. If in, if in 2018 the price goes up, so price of 2018 goes up, the direct effect, the first step is that sales in 2018 sales in 18 are gonna go slightly down because because it's more expensive so that less customers buy the jeans now because sales went down in 2018 that means that the shop lost some customers fewer people bought the jeans this effect translates slightly in 2019 as well because when the season comes for buying the jeans 
in the next quarter or in the next period of 2019, there are going to be less people coming to the shop. So because of the less number of customers, the sales in 2019 is also going to be slightly lower. This effect has a forward effect. It goes, it translates into the next period. So the sales in 2019 is also going to go slightly lower. That's the intuition. That's how the mechanism works. And I hope the numbers make sense now because we can see if we have an effect from 2017 on 2019, well, 2017 is ha having an effect. The price in 2017, the change in prices in 2017 has an effect on the sales in 2017, which translates into sales in 2018, which then translates into a change in sales in 2019. So because the effect is indirect via these two steps, the effect is also smaller. But over here, the effect is faster. It's bigger because it's happening now. The price decreases in this period, the price increases, I'm sorry, in this period, so the sales decreases more in this period. There is no indirect effect. The, the effect goes straight into the sales of 2019. That's why these coefficients differ and they should differ in this way. The biggest effect have to, has to be the most recent and then the next leg has a smaller effect, two legs later has even a smaller effect and so on. Anyway, that's the intuition. Hope this makes sense and we're done.